we as students stay away from our homes, from the familial, emotional comforts. In terms of our careers, we move out seeking greener pastures. In that, we seek company in opposite sex. Some people get into relationships, which gradually progresses to physical intimacy. Sadhguru, the question is then why as generations, we cannot discuss it openly? Or is premarital sex still a taboo? See, this is not some kind of a prescription. This is an individual need. Right now, we must understand this. In this society, we handled human sexuality like this. Before a girl attains puberty, they are named. This is the boy you're going to marry at the age of six or seven. They don't marry, but they say, they keep telling him, your uncle's son, this guy, you're going to marry him, you're going to marry him. They're telling him, you're going to marry her. So they have not seen each other, they have not met each other, they have nothing going, but emotionally they're being bound. Before they touch each other physically, they want them to be emotionally bound in a strong way. So this is the technique of the culture, how they dealt with it. So when you become or attain to your puberty, when your body blossoms into certain possibilities, now your emotions are already with somebody. So you handle your body, you don't go wild because your emotions are already attached to somebody. So by the time they're fifteen, sixteen, the girl gets married. By the time they're seventeen, eighteen, the boy gets married. They get into agriculture or business or whatever, whatever their activity. So one important aspect of the life of the youth is settled. One thing is emotion, another thing is a physical requirement. Both are settled at an early age. And of course, those days children came within a year or two years, so they got engaged and they got busy and they… life went on, all right? Today, our lives have changed because by the time you finish education, most people are minimum twenty-four, twenty-five years of age. PhD means thirty… what, thirty-five <laughs> I don't know what <laughs> It depends how kind your professor is <laughs> So, let us say average education time is twenty-five years of age. By the time they get employment and settle down somewhere to reasonable financial security, thirty years of time, all right? The peak of human hormonal function is between fifteen to thirty. You're not teaching people some ascetic way to live. You're not giving them some sadhana that they're transforming their energy into some other possibility and attaining to something else. There is no such thing. And there's close proximity with the opposite sex. If you don't want to address it, then you will create an unhealthy society, very unhealthy society, which unfortunately is finding expression in violent ways in our society because we've not addressed the fundamental needs of a human being. First thing is nourishment. If nourishment is taken care of, you must understand, nourishment is survival. Once survival is taken, taken care of, naturally the species, this is not even individual, the species that you are is longing to reproduce. <coughs> this is how it's built. It's longing to reproduce because this is survival of the species. If people don't reproduce, there is not going to be human race, isn't it? So. Your body and your mind plays many tricks and how when you look at somebody, you suddenly think they're the most beautiful, suddenly you think they're the most fantastic, you will discover later <laughs> many things. But initially, everything is clouded. See, I'm telling you, let's say you are uh, ten, twelve years of age, you looked at people, they're quite normal. Suddenly you became fourteen. Every little bump on somebody's body is a world by itself <laughs> Simply because your hormones begin to influence everything. In a way, your hormo… your uh, intelligence is… your intelligence is hijacked by your hormones. Now, this is not to be judged as bad or good, this is a natural process. There may be a few people who will go beyond that. 
It's fantastic for them if they can go beyond that. They're not compulsive about it, they went beyond it, fantastic for that person. But you expect the whole society to go beyond it, you're just stupid. Such a thing doesn't happen. So, definitely the debate of when and how sexuality should happen has to come in. But now, we are still having a certain cultural aspects to us that we are an emotional lot. We are still an emotional lot. People suffer immensely when things happen without the needed emotions. A whole lot of people at least, there may be a few people who are about that, but a whole lot of people suffer. So, for our country, for our society, how to deal with this without causing a major disruption in the social structure is something that we must debate. You must do re research on it, how to do it. Sadhguru, uh, though I get a little hint of the answer of my question from your elaboration, but still I will ask it. Uh, so, uh, I had this belief or in fact maybe uh, I was made to believe this whole concept of one life, one partner. But now when I see or observe, the whole monogamous relationships do not seem to be existing anymore. The whole idea of it is gone. Uh, what you think about it? Oh, uh, it's not gone. Maybe in JNU, it's gone <laughs> In the… in the rest of the world, it's not really gone. Even if you… even if you go to United States where there seems to be so much pro pro promiscuity, even there, when people marry, they believe it's for life. But of course, two years later, life gets over. <laughs> That's another matter, but when they get married, they believe it's for life. That's why they invest in the diamonds. <laughs> they think <laughs> it's a lifetime investment. They're putting on that. But unfortunately, for all kinds of things, relationships go wrong. And one reason they go wrong so easily is because people are meeting much later in their life. See, when people met much younger, when their personalities were not concretized, they met early, seventeen, eighteen, then two people became like one person very easily. Now they're meeting at thirty. Now both are concretized, two concrete blocks. <laughs> but I'm seeing young people, if they marry, they hang on. If people marry over fifty years of age, they hang on because they have again softened up, concretized again. Between twenty… between thirty and fifty, it's a bit of a concrete block, you know, strong persona. Now, uh, friction happens. Well, if they are wise, they will find something beyond. Well, monogamy and polygamy or whatever kind of gamy, if you want to see, <laughs> the important thing we need to understand is, you know, we are all here, you and me are here. This means a man and woman came together some time ago. Maybe you think their thing, ah, their parents, you know, they don't love, they don't uh, do sex, they don't do anything, they just because a priest uttered a mantra, you were born probably <laughs> No, it's not like that. Somebody had a physical need, so they handled it through marriage and we are here. And now we can… at, at a certain age, at a stage in your life, after, when you become eighteen, you become always against marriage. But when you were three years of age, you were for marriage, your parents' marriage. When you were three years of age, were you not glad your parents had a stable marriage? Hello? Yes. When you're eighteen, you think of free sex and no marriage and everything. But once again, if you become fifty, fifty-five, then you will look for a relationship that lasts. So it is for you to consider, because it's your life, to consider whether you want to live a life where emotionally you're always looking out for somebody or you settle it in a certain way so that you can use your intelligence and time to create something else. Your research, your work or whatever you're doing, if emotions and body are settled, actually your ability to use your intelligence will be much better. Otherwise, every day you have to walk around to find somebody <laughs> No, I'm not making this any this thing because I feel so bad in United States, 
people I know, and you know that uh, thousands of people are involved with me now, people over forty, forty-five years of age, women I'm saying, wonderful people, but they are all on this… Uh, these days they've all gone online, otherwise they go sit in a bar and wait. Somebody needs to pick them up today. It's terrible. Tinder generation. I'm sorry? Tinder generation. Whatever you want to call it <laughs> But I think it's so pathetic when a woman at forty-five should have been loved and respected in a proper atmosphere. Now she's sitting there looking for some strange guy to come her way and she's going to make the judgment in the next ten minutes when he buys her a drink or a dinner or something. This is tragic. This is tragic that you will end up without any sense of dignity. This doesn't mean everybody will go that way, but you must think of the larger well-being. Before you break a social structure, you must think whether we can replace it with a better structure. At any point in our life, let everybody understand this, whether it's a social structure or a political structure or a psychological setup in the society, whatever, before we break it, we must think through whether we have a better alternative system. Without an alternative system, if you break the existing damn thing that's working reasonably well, then it'll go crazy.